Hello, welcome to Maths Live. I'll just wait for a second for people to join me this morning and we'll be ready to go. Good morning, Maths fans. So today we're going to be looking at lines two and um, the ins and outs of how they work. And we'll have a little recap on what we were talking about last yesterday, or Wednesday actually. Um, so, first of all, I've been doing a bit of research on a bit of music. And it turns out there is a band in Canada called the Straight Lines Band which is absolutely amazing. So let's have a little listen to Straight Lines Band from Canada. Fantastic. Okay, so have a look for that. Um, it's on YouTube if you want to do some maths music. Okay, so um, first of all, I want you to have a look at my little diagram. So that's me dropping in on the skate park. Okay, and I just want to point out a couple of things about this. All right, so you need to think about the first part of this dropping in business. Terrifying, I have to say, but I managed to do it. Okay, and you can see how steep it is. In fact, it's near, it's pretty much vertical. But as you go further down, it becomes less and less vertical. So, thinking about steepness here, it's very steep to start with, it's not so steep later on. So, that's important to remember the straight lines because that could be um, very steep that could be not very steep so steepness of a line important to consider i just want you to think about that and have it in your mind just further on so we've got two drawings here and there's two things i want to concentrate on let's whiz back in time to um wednesday so on wednesday we looked at drawing straight lines and we had this straight line here and we did it as a um, number machine we drew that out as a number machine. So as numbers come in, you times by two and add three. A better way of writing this using algebra would be two X plus three. So the X values get multiplied by two and then we add three to make the Y. So then we can formulate a table, okay, of the ins or X's or the outs or the Y's times by two, add three. Once two is two, add three, five, uh, five. Two twos are four, add three is seven, and so on and so on. Now you'll notice that we're going up in twos, and these are very closely linked sequences because we do have a sequence here. We're going up by twos. This means that it's a two times table because two times table goes up in twos. Once two is two, two twos are four, three twos are six. But we need an adjustment because actually, Although it's a two times table, take that, that first part, once two is two, we've got five. So we need to add on three, which is where this add three comes. Two twos are four, add three, make seven. So two times table, two times table, add three. Now, this, this add on number we talked about in more detail, and we agree, well, I told you that it was a special word for it because that's where the line starts you could argue it starts in negative numbers but we won't get to that today um, so that's where the line starts and that's where it crosses the y um, axis so that number is very important and called the y intercept that's the start of the line um, and you can see that both of these lines are the same steepness but the difference is they're starting at different points y-intercept here is six y-intercept here is three and we have a special letter a code just to to say what the y-intercept is and it's c okay so c is the uh, letter for the y-intercept 
we finished off looking at the steepness of the line and I mentioned that it was also called the median of the line. Now the steepness here is the same, the median of the line and um, that's also known as the gradient. Okay, and that's why we choose M, with M for median of the line. And I only found that out about 12 months ago. Okay, I just presumed it was always M, M for gradient. I always often wondered why they couldn't have G, but now I know, median of the line. Same as gradient. Okay, so um, that was what we covered um, on lines one. So today we're going to look at do, get taking this concept a little bit further. So this is a little bit of a recap here. If you have a look at these two lines, this first line, the C is three. The C equals three. Y-intercept is three. So first question of the morning, folks. What is the C for this line here? What is the C for this line here? Type your answers in now. Okay, answers are coming in. And while we're waiting, just a good morning to Lydia and a good morning to Alfie. Nice to see you guys again. Um, we've got six viewers, so make yourself known. Okay. Um, yeah, that's correct. So the median of the line here is 2. C equals 2. Brilliant. Because it crosses the axis at 2. I'll do that in another colour. So those lines are pretty much the same. The only difference is they start at different places and they're the same steepness. So if I was going down here on the skateboard, I, I would go the same speed. Good morning to you, Lydia Rumsey. Nice to see you too. Okay, so what's happening here then? Now, the y-intercept for both of these lines is going to be two. So... But they look different, okay? If I was skateboarding down this red one, I'd be going a lot faster than skateboarding down this black one. So it's to do with the steepness of the line. And as we talked about, the steepness of the line is called the gradient, okay? So what letter represents the gradient? It's not G. Let's see who's been listening this morning. Type your answers into the comment box. What letter do we re designate for gradient? That's correct. Answers coming in now. Well done, Lydia Monks. You've got the M. Fantastic. Okay, that'll be a reward slip for you when we get back. Here we go. So, drop in, dude. Let's get going on the next, the next section. So, um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Let's look at this again. So, the difference between these lines is the gradient, which is also designated as M, is higher for the red um, line compared to the black line. Okay. Now, we talked about the gradient here being two because for every one you go two up. Let's just have a look at the um, red line. So for every one, you go one up. So the M is one for um, the red line. And for the black line, for every one, we're going half up. So M equals a half. So we're comparing how far we go along one unit with how far we go up. So let's look into gradients in a bit more detail this morning. Okay, so I've got a little um, worksheet to have a look at. Okay, here and here and here. So we want to start off with this one. In fact, we're only going to look at this one here. I've just printed all of them off. So now the confusing thing here is that for years and years and years, I always talk to you about or, or talk to my classes and in primary and all the rest of it all, the, all your maths work we always talk about coordinates along the corridor up the stairs so you're doing the x bit first and then the y bit all the same okay we go along the corridor up the stairs now for gradients it's the opposite way round we're looking at the y component first 
compared to the X component. So it switches round. Now that is a bit of a confusing part, but you're gonna you're gonna have to learn that. So let's have a look at this um, this little diagram. Okay. So we what we've got here is that um, we've got four, one, two, three, four, four units along with one unit up. So thinking about it, the opposite way to coordinates, okay, and you make a fraction, it's it's one, it's one up, y coordinates up, up the corridor, no, up the stairs, up the stairs and along the corridor. One on the top on the numerator, four on the bottom of the fraction, which is the denominator. So that makes the gradient, which is also m. Now, changing y over changing x, that's a good way of writing the rule, okay? Or but I, I like this rule better, rise over run. They're both the same, thing. it's up to you how you remember it, but that for me is easy to remember. Okay, the opposite way, rise over run, opposite way to coordinates. Okay, so let's have a look at doing these questions down here then, all right? So let's have a look at the first one. So, find that a highlight is good for these okay so what you've got to do is you've got to make a right angle triangle between two points you know or two positions all right let me shade that in a bit darker so we can see it so on this question we but we need both of these values so we just just do a count one two three four four units that way one, two units that way. So using our rule, rise over run, we do rise is four, run going along is two, four over two. Breaking that down or simplifying it into its lowest term, okay, both of those numbers uh, will divide by two. So it'll be two at the top on the numerator, I must keep saying numerator, denominator, it's better, two, div two numerator, one um, denominator, two divided by one equals two. So the gradient here is two, okay? So look at this one, same idea. I'm going to go red here. All right, so we've got two units up, one, two, one, two, three units across. Now using our rise over run, the gradient's gonna be two out of three. Okay, two out of three, but there's a problem. You can see this one is going that way, this one's going that way. Now I've done exactly the same thing. Does anybody know what we can do? There's one symbol that'll make this work. What is the symbol? Answers are coming in now. Well done, folks. Just have a guess if you like. That's the thing with maths. I always think that, you know, you're better off having a little go, maybe getting it wrong and then seeing why it's wrong and then um, and then adjusting it from there. Brilliant. Well done to Alfie Howard with a minus sign. Fantastic first in line there. Oh, sorry. No, Lydia's got it first, but well done to Alfie as well. Well done to Lydia too. So it's a negative. And when you think about negatives, try and think negatives is a change of direction. We're going that direction, negative, we're going that direction. Brilliant. Okay, so that's how these um, these gradients work. Okay, let's just have a look at this one here, just to finish off on the gradients, and then we'll put this all together. Okay, I think we may need just a little bit of a recap on Monday because of the time aspects of this topic, but that's okay. We're going to have fractions week next week, so we can just, just recap on what we did, first of all, on the Monday. All right, so uh, quickly through this last one, 
we've got one, two, three units there, two units there, rise over run, three over two. Okay. Interestingly, if you do a 45 degree angle, you're going to have one over one. So the gradient of a 45 degree angle is one. So if you have something very, very um, shallow, is that the word? Or not steep? Um, very, very low steepness, maybe. Okay, now the gradient of a very low steep sort of slope is going to be, um, it's going to be a fraction. Okay, so once you get past 45 degrees, you have fractions, and then there's no limit as we get steeper and steeper until we get right vertical to infinity. There's no limit on the numbers we can have going up. Okay, that's brilliant. So, um, great lines. We've got two aspects of lines to really think about. The, the, the times table part, okay, that's the gradient, and where we start from, that's the C part, the, the y-intercept. So y-intercept gradients, they're the two big things of these lines. Okay, right, let's have a look at the next sheet. So whiz through these. Now you might want to practice this. Obviously I can't, I'm not doing every single question, but you might want to have a, a practice at some of these worksheets. Okay, and um, or, or similar. I mean, it's very easy to find these worksheets on the web. Type in gradients into Google, gradients worksheet, worksheet, and boom, there's loads to practice from, usually with answers. Some more straight lines to practice there. I found these in two seconds, so there's load, loads of loads of things you can do. Okay, now I'm going to put this all together. Um, right, which one are we going to do? Okay, so we're just going to concentrate on looking at this this question here. Okay, that's all we do. We're going to do. We're not going to do that one. So take you through the whole process of a typical lines question. Now I could quite happily see that a GCSE grade CB worth about five marks. Okay, you'd probably have two two for drawing it out, one each for them. That's four, and one each for finding maybe finding the equation up to five marks, I would say. Um, okay, so let's, let's, let's work through this question. Draw these lines on the grid. So we've got a formula, y equals 2x minus 3. Now, there's no harm in converting that into a number machine. So think about what's going on here. The times table part is there, two times, two times the x. Oops, sorry, technical problem with the camera, DIY job here, there we go. Um, yeah, so the times table part is there. So in part, what are we doing to it? We're times in by x, two, times in by two, and then taking away three, and that's making our out part, which is also the y part, and that's the x part. 2 times the x minus 3, okay? So if we had a number machine, it would be times by 2, take away 3. So we need a bit of a table. Now, just for convenience, I'm going to do this table um, horizontally, but it's exactly the same thing as when I did the other example with the table vertically. Same thing. We're times in by two, we're taking away three. Okay. So times in by two, naught twos are not two, naught twos are nothing, take away three, negative three. Okay. Next one. Times in by two, taking away three. That's what we're doing. There. Once two is two, take away three is negative one. Okay, next question. Comments, please. Okay, we've got the number 2 times by 2, take away 3. Let's see if we've got any answers. Times the number by 2, then take away 3. Okay. 
and answers coming in yes yes we've got them right one one and one fantastic okay so the next one three two is a six take away three is three brilliant so there's our um our points to plot okay now we're not finding the gradient yet so we'll do along the corridor up or down the stairs along the corridor so these are coordinates there's the first coordinate there's the second so not the gradient so we're not doing rise over run yet we're doing coordinates to plot the graph naught negative three down here one negative one there two one three three I could do a few more points just but but we should be able to see that line coming together nicely okay another way of looking at it is look one along two up one along two up one along two up already finding the gradient here one along two up one along two up. I can just keep it going now so join them all up and we oh a bit of a wobble there we go so there's our line so that bit's done okay now we need the gradient and the y-intercept okay so we've established from our previous work that that part there is the gradient okay and that part and the, the steepness is the um the, the sorry no 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 that part there is the y-intercept i'm getting that mixed up and then we need the 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 gradient for the rise over run bit so let's just put that into the answers first because that's easy so that's negative three don't forget the negative three now folks we need the gradient so best thing to do here although we've got a good idea what it's going to be best thing to do is make a triangle with two points we know it doesn't matter which ones we use okay uh, or we could be thinking how how much up do I go for everyone across so there are various ways of doing it okay now I'm going to make a big triangle if you don't know if it's not clear what the points are you these you may have to do two points with a bit of distance but I'm choosing to make a big triangle as long as you make a triangle it's all balances all it all works out the same so let's count the units here remember oh uh, one two three four five six seven eight remember rise over run one two three four so the gradient rise over run rise is eight run is four so the, the, now now notice we're going the opposite way to coordinates we plotted them along the corridor up the stairs this time we're looking at the y component first the x component second the rise is the y component the the run is the x co component right simplify that okay oh good morning dylan fullard you have to make yourself known a bit earlier next time so i can say hello welcome to welcome to maths live dylan nice to see you this morning oh and i like your your little um symbol your facebook symbol little sun rising over the mountains brilliant oh let's get back to this you should have thought about this answer eight divided by four do you want to write them down quick tap them in tap them in what do we get for the gradient of this line yep answers coming in now that's correct simplifying okay well done the answers have been tapped in again typed in tapped in typed in brilliant okay all right two over one's fine what you can have two two over one is the same as two so that goes to two over one two out of i should say i like the word out of better two out of one which gives us an answer of two. So we can put the gradient in here and remember the symbol is M, that's useful to know. Okay, and now the final bit is to make this connection between the rule. So look at the rule there. Look at that number, that number there times X, what is that number? 
to 2 to the n. So actually, the first number before the x, and that's got a special name, the coefficient, that number is also the gradient or the times table. It's all linked together. That's the times table, that number there. So that the times table is also the gradient. It's really important because that's the number we're going up by each time. Okay. Now, what's this number here? That's going to be the y-intercept. What is the symbol for y-intercept? That's a C. Okay. And there's a minus there. So y equals mx minus C. But most of the time, it, you're adding the C on. You're starting up here most of the time. So for the rule, we write plus. And if you use a minus, that's absolutely fine. And it's like plus or minus because they're opposites, remember. So Luke... From what we've got there, we can actually find the gradient straight away because that's the number times the x, the x coefficient, and that's the number, the c is, is the number at the end. So these two here match up, and these two here match up. Now we're going to finish off today by looking at this next question, but we're not drawing it. Okay. So this is, uh, let me write it out because it's a little bit uh, small for the camera to pick up on. Y equals negative 3x plus 4. Really think hard of what we learned so far. Mx plus c. So m is the number times x. Okay, so the gradient, which is m, what's it going to be without drawing it? I've kind of point, pointed to it a little bit. Dylan, you put two over one for your last answer. That's absolutely fine, but a better way of describing it is two out of, because it tells you what's going on. Over doesn't really, it, it, it says what it looks like, but it doesn't tell you what, to, what it means, whereas out of, really good way of writing fractions. Okay, um, but thanks for your feedback there, Dylan. Yeah, brilliant. So um, thank you, Lydia Monks. It's the next reward slip. Just keep a tally how many you're going to need, Lydia Monks, because you're going to have a few when we get back. So that's m equals minus 3. Not minus 3, negative 3. Okay, and the y-intercept, in a similar fashion, the c part is the number at the end. So having a look at this this, o this other um, line, the second line that we're not going to draw, but we are going to do this bit of the question, the y-intercept C, okay, type your answers in, what would the C part be? Alfie's got an interesting symbol for his, is that a wolf, Al Alfie, or an Alsatian? Pretty cool, anyway. I'm I'm on about Alfie's um, little symbol for his Facebook. Um, quite cool, really. Oh, I noticed Lydia Rumsey's got a nice. I would say that's a border terrier. There is that right, Lydia Rumsey? Border terrier it looks quite cute. Yeah, that's correct. It's four for the C. Brilliant. I'm just looking at your Facebook profile. Not the profiles, just your pictures on next to your name. I wouldn't look at your profiles. I'm not that I'm not into doing that sort of thing at all. So this is great. Um okay, so brilliant to see everyone this morning. Okay, and just a little recap on what we've learned. Okay, so drawing lines is linked to sequences. The number where you start the line, where it crosses the Y, is called the Y intercept, that's C. We talked in depth about the steepness of a slope, whether it's, if it's steep, it has a high number. And to work out the, the, the steepness of the slope, we do rise over run. Or another way of thinking about it is how far, for one unit going in the X, how many um, up units do you need to have? That's a good way of thinking about what um, gradient is. Okay, and so we looked at that, and then we looked at the connection 
um, for y equal, which is to the um, the formula, and we established that the number times x was an m, and the number at the end is a c. Okay, so that's y equals m x plus c as a general rule. Okay, and put so that's put it all together. So this so then we've got a rule for the formulas that we can work at, work on, and given a um, a, a rule for a line. We can work out the M and C without even drawing it now because we know that that number there where I'm pointing to is the M and that number there is a C. And just to clarify that when a set, when we, we, we've got Y equals MX plus C, but that plus could be a minus or the M could be a minus too, but we've got, we've got to remember the formula one way or the other. So one thing I would advise you to do is learn this formula y equals mx plus c it's really easy in maths to be honest in maths there's not that many things you have to learn off by art you have to learn strategies and methods but in terms of rules compared to other subjects there's not actually that much stuff to learn so that's that's pretty easy to learn Okay, off by art. Y equals MX plus C. Things like Sokotoa, which we did earlier. Um, you know, things like that. It's another thing to learn. Another formula to learn. But there's not that many, actually. There really isn't that many to, to learn. It's, it's, it's knowing how to use these techniques and methods and strategies. Okay, so I, I'm pleased with where we got to today. I, I, thought, I thought we weren't going to get that far, or I wasn't going to get that far. But actually, it's come together very, very nicely. Remember that these these sessions they're only um, they're only background, um, and you need to follow them up with more detail. Uh, watch my video again, of course, through Facebook, and don't forget to join, uh, to pass pass it on to people that we, we we're, we're live. And if you're watching later on, please join me live. Now, um, that's it for today. Um, quick reminder next week I'm, I'm in school Wednesday but we're gonna de I'm gonna de delegate or dedicate the whole week to fractions because I've had a request from a parent fractions so start start to finish it'll be on fractions and we're gonna start with the basics now don't let that put you off folks because if we don't, a lot of people get fractions wrong or confused with fractions because they don't get the basics to start with. So just because we're starting off with ba basic fractions on Monday, don't don't think that that uh, is an excuse to miss that one out. You should be watching the Monday, and that is probably the most important of the whole week. Basic, yes, but getting that basic concept firmly established is the important bit. Okay, so nice weather, well, warm weather on the way for the weekend, I don't know about sun, so get yourselves out and about, but in a safe way, of course, out and about mainly gardens at the moment. Okay, have a good one, and um, I look forward to seeing you on Monday, and I'm going to leave you with this new band that I found, which I love, and that's the Straight Lines Band. Bye for now. Got my straight lines here, got my straight lines there. Y equals MX plus C. See you Monday.